To use your watercolours you'll need a cup of water, different size watercolour brushes, a palette, your watercolour paints and a tissue. You'll also need either watercolour paper or thick white card. The first thing you'll need to do is wet your brush. Gently dab it in the water, wipe it on the side so it's not dripping wet and you can place it on your hand to feel how it should feel. It should feel wet but not dripping. Now you're going to create a bank of colour in your palette. Here we're using yellow ochre. Twist the brush gently in the paint to pick up lots of paint and dab it in the area on your palette for that colour. If it's too dry, add a bit of water to make it nice and wet. Pick more colour up so that it's really rich and bright. Notice how I'm twisting the brush in the paint. Now let's see what this brush can do. This petal shape is a great exercise to do. You start with the tip, you press harder in the middle and very slow at the end and lighter again. Now we'll try some curved lines. You can see the difference when the brush is full of paint or when it's thin and there's less paint on the brush. Now some straight lines. These can be quite thick because this is the thickest brush we're using. Some dots. These end up looking like spikes which could be quite useful for certain things that you're painting. And finally some diagonal lines. Again you can see some places the paint is thick and some it's thin. Washing your brush is super important. It should be a gentle process. Wipe the brush on the edge. If it still runs a bit dirty, then wash it again. The more you look after your brush, the better it will serve you and the longer it will last. If you think it's clean, you can check on the tissue. Twist the brush gently on the tissue. It still has a bit of paint on, so you wash it again, gently running it through the water, wiping it on the side, and then twist it gently on the tissue to make a sharp, clean point. Classic mistake is soaking brushes in water. Do not ever do this as it bends the tip of the brush and it will never be straight and pointy again. We're now going to use the next size brush down. I'm going to add some water in the palette. And this will be for my bank of colour this time red. Now I'm going to gently brush the brush into the red, twisting it as I go to pick up paint. Now dabbing it in the palette to create my bank of colour. I'm trying to twist it to get a point. If twisting in the paint on the palette doesn't get your point, use a tissue. This brush is a cheaper brush than my fat brush. You can see that the very tip, the point, isn't very pointy. This doesn't show up as much on the curved lines, or these straight lines. But anything that needs a clear point, like these dots, you can see the tip is wonky. I'm now going to purposefully make a classic mistake. I'm going to use a very thin brush to create my bank of colour. 
you can see how slow this is. I keep having to go back and forward, back and forward with this tiny brush. This is to show you that using a fat brush is much more effective for this. Now the petals. Wavy lines. You can get a lot more detail with a tiny brush. Lovely spikes. This is the best brush for these thin, sharp spikes. And really thin, fine lines diagonally here. Now for a more advanced exercise. You're going to create a curved petal shape. You press very lightly at the beginning. You press harder in the middle and light at the end. You'll see it's thin, thick and thin. As you go along, you create a sort of rope pattern. You can try this with different size brushes. Here's the fatter brush. Thin, thick, thin. You can see this one is not very thin at the end. It's important to take your time, not rush, so that each shape is correctly formed. When you've done a few of those, you can try the extra challenge. You, s you begin big, and each one that you do, you create it a little smaller than the last one. It ends up forming a sort of shell shape. Another advanced pattern is to try this. Mix one base colour, here yellow, on your brush and at the very tip add another colour, here red. You're now going to create petal shapes. You begin by pressing lightly, you press heavier in the middle and lighter at the end. For these I'm challenging myself, I'm going to get smaller and smaller and also curve them round. It's quite relaxing to do these but it takes a lot of fine motor skill and attention. Finally Putting together all the skills that you've learnt, create some sort of weird and wonderful doodle. I'm creating a sort of sea slug looking creature. I'm mixing the petal shapes of different sizes with curved, colourful lines. Just putting together lots of those skills in my own piece of unique artwork. This is a chance for you to really have a bit of fun. Here's his eye, some curved lines on his body, some strange looking legs. I hope you liked this tutorial. Please hit the thumbs up button if you loved it or subscribe to my channel. You could also follow me at Nash Henkel Art on Instagram. Thanks for watching.